There are countless insects on planet Earth, and most of them are perfectly marvelous, especially in our gardens, but a few really suck. And today I'm going to tell you about the squash vine borer, which is solidly at the top of my list <laughs> of insects that suck. So at first, what happens? You start to see your zucchini, your winter squash, their leaves in the heat of the day are wilting. No big deal, they do that sometimes if they're healthy on a really hot day, if it's been really hot for a long time. But maybe two weeks later, your plants are toast and what's going on? You most likely have these squash vine borers. And let's talk about life cycle. Rumi says, love your enemy. My mother simply says, know your enemy. And I say, you choose. And so in organic gardening, so much is just knowing the life cycle and knowing how to thwart the life cycle of the things you want to thwart, whether it's a disease or an insect. So I'll describe the life cycle of our lovely, beautiful moth the squash vine borer. So there's this beautiful moth, check out in the post the gorgeous photograph. It's a really beautiful insect. And they will overwinter as pupa in the ground, right at the base of whatever plant they were living on last year in your garden most likely. And then late June, early July, they will emerge out of the ground and they will crawl into the stem. Of, they will crawl into the stem of those darned little zucchinis or winter squash, whatever you're growing. And so once they do that, they are actively eating the marrow, all that sweet, juicy, vascular tissue that is your zucchini or your winter squash. Um, and they are going to town. And at first they're very small, of course. That egg is very small. And as they grow, they can become a two inch, very large grub. And then once they become a grub, they'll go back into the ground and um, overwinter there for the year. So the good news is they just have one generation per year. They have, they're an adult for a just a week in at the end of June, early July, they lay their eggs at the base of the stem. Then they're just living in your squash for a month and then they drop back into the soil. So as far as pesky insects go, they're really easy to manage compared to many other things. So what's next? You identify that you have this little guy and oh man, that sucks. So I'm here at Jean Cease's beautiful garden here in Naples, and we have some classic damage I'm excited to show you. So I'm going to lift up the plant. Yes, that means I've just killed this plant. Um, and in the name of future generations of squash, it's true. <laughs> um, so I'll cut it out so that I can lift it up to you and show you what this damage actually looks like. It's pretty diagnostic. Nothing else really looks like it is the good news. So it's pretty easy to identify. And here you are, friends. Oh, yes. So we have this pretty exquisite and obvious, this is a pretty progressed, um, little guy so this is there's a huge opening often at the beginning you'll see frass which is a fancy fun name for insect poop and I like to go in and honestly I go after the guy um, isn't that interesting I just gave him a pronoun I go after that little insect because I want to be really sure that I kill it I really don't want it to mature to the extent that it's going to fall back into the soil and become another lifetime. So yeah, dun, dun. there it is. <laughs> so take a look. Oh gosh, I cut him in half already. So yeah, there we have quite a writhing little mass. There's one half and there is the other half here. So yeah, they're not a caterpillar larva in the sense that, you know, think a monarch caterpillar with all those legs. They're like a grub with no legs. Wow, you can see. Oh, I hope you can. It's actually pooping in its death, this little <laughs> light green frass. <laughs> so yeah, that's the color you look for. Um, so I don't hesitate. Oh, thank you, Jean. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little dark head. Oh, so, oh gosh, actually there's multiple ones. So it's alive. Oh, I'm cutting it in half. I'm so sorry, world. So yes, it's painful. 
But yes, this is what's saving all the rest of the generations. <laughs> This is Jean getting back at generations. <laughs> so yes, if I can do it, you can do it too. You can cringe, you can cry, you can scream. I do all these things. Um, but so here, go after it. Make sure that that culprit is actually dead. And then you can sleep at night You're and know good. that zucchini is going to grow for the future of your life. <laughs> so um, yes, so once you have identified that you have these guys. You have a few other options besides going in and killing them like a ruthless murderer as I just did. Well, I guess they all involve death, just different stages. So here's one option. You can swap the adult. The adult moth that you'll see, actually Bija, one of our Flourish Garden Club members, sent me this gorgeous photograph of one of the adults that was flying around her garden. And if you see those adults, swap them. Um, and if you're not a Jedi, here's another option. They love the color yellow, so you can take, get a yellow pail, a yellow bucket. They love, I mean, think of them, their squash is their thing, so they are going after the color yellow, like the blossom, and put some water in that, they'll likely drown in that. So that is another, that's another really great option for thwarting our squash vine borers. So then there's catch the grub, which is key. Um, there's also starving them. So if you have them, especially in large quantities, your best bet is to starve them. So what does that actually mean, Petra? They love, and perhaps you could see, this zucchini is a really fleshy, pithy stem. So the two main, there's three main genus species, three main species that are going to grow here in the Northeast. Um, Cucurbita pipo, Cucurbita maxima, and Cucurbita moschata. And so the pipos, yeah, and take a look on all of our all of our seed packets, we have that Latin for you. So all the pipos are going to be that really fleshy stem that they love. Also the maximas. So here's a few examples. Certainly zucchini. On the back of the packet, there's Cucurbita <laughs> pipo. It depends who you ask, Pepo. You know, tomato, tomato. Um, but unfortunately, Cucurbita pipo is kind of the dog. Like, all dogs look really different, but whoa, they all can breed and do their thing. So Cucurbita pipo is that diversity within that same species as well, because that includes delicata, pumpkin, summer squash, all patty pans, <laughs> spaghetti squash. So definitely take a look at yeah, that back of the packet, and most packets, even if they're not fruition seeds, will say. Um, so then that Maxima, which is a lot like the Hubbard type, and this is a buttercup squash, um, that will say Cucurbita Maxima on top. That also is something that will totally harbor your generations <laughs> of squash vine borers. On the other hand, Machada is full of delicious things. Honey nut, Gouda, these are two of my favorites. Um, and take a look, Machada there. They have a really small stem by comparison and it's much more dense. So those little guys can't even get in once they, the adult lays the eggs at the base of the stem and they try to emerge in the stem, they can't do it. So if you want to starve them, don't grow any Cucurbita pipos or Maximas for three years. If you can't handle life otherwise, grow machadas. You can eat them as green in their green form and their summer squash form. Fun fact, all summer squash you could eat at wi as winter squash if you had to. It's generally not delicious. But the contrasting, all winter squash you can eat as green summer squash and it generally is pretty passable if not delectable. Um, Tromoncino is one of the other, my favorite, machadas that is a grand zucchini. So there's another option for you too. So finally, you've got another option. You can simply plant late. So here's the thing, that, that moth is going to be emerging out of the soil in late June. So if you plant your seeds, you're, essentially it would be a second succession, but just make it your first succession of zucchini, any pipo, maxima, at the beginning of July, that will circumvent their lifestyle, their life cycle as well. Um, so there you have it, friends. There are four fabulous options for you to thwart the lifestyle of the rich and the famous, the squash vine borer. And I'm sorry that you had to witness me being a ruthless murderer. Now you know the truth. I kill a lot of plants 
and I kill a lot of animals and I love them all a lot and I love all of you a lot too and I hope that this surrounds us all with more beauty and abundance in our lives. Um, one final thought, the other thing that you're gonna find really taking advantage of that glorious zucchini in your life and all the other winter squash as well, but including your cucum cucumbers and cantaloupe and watermelon are those pesky gray squash bugs. So definitely check out our next tutorial all about them because they are their own proverbial can of worms, ball of wax, and I can't wait for you to witness me killing some of them too in various and sundried ways. <laughs>